On the build show today, I'm gonna to show you a house that I believe is probably the best and lowest cost way to reach high performance. Now what we're doing over the next couple of weeks is we're taking a look at our Build Show Network contributors kind of best of, and we're gonna be showing every single Tuesday for the next 14 weeks, a video from Build Show Network that's never been seen before here on the YouTubes, but I wanted to kind of introduce you to make sure you knew who was shooting videos over on thebuildshow.com, that's buildshownetwork.com. So in this video, this house that I visited a couple years ago that Jake Bruton built and Steve Basic designed, I swear, this, this house totally blew my mind when I saw it. It is literally the cheapest way to get the highest performance house. And we're using standard off-the-shelf materials. This house has standard zip system sheathing. Uh, this house has regular roof trusses, drywall on the ceiling as an air barrier, blown in insulation. There's really nothing fancy happening here. But wait till you see the way that Jake and Steve put this together. This is a fabulous video. With that being said, today's build show, the best of the build show. Let's get going. Hi, I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building here in Columbia, Missouri. And today on the build show, I want to introduce you to Steve Basic of Steve Basic Architects out of Reading, Massachusetts. What's up, buddy? Coming. Glad to be here. And Behind us is what we're calling our hybrid house. And Steve is the architect and we're the builders and we make up the, the team that's creating what you see behind us, this big green box. I guess I wanna start with you, Steve, by uh, can you give us a little bit of the background on this project and how we wound up with this green box behind us? Yeah, so I, I think what's really important to mention here is the fact that, you know, the, the fact that you and I do projects together, but we really treat it as a team effort right from the design phase in that it's a simple green box, but you know, simplicity is a hard thing to achieve. And I think that in the subsequent videos, you'll see that, you know, we scrutinized a lot of very traditional decisions in the way things get built here. And we chose to make some obvious changes in the way things traditionally get done to suit the needs of us now, our clients now, but also to suit the needs of this house for the next 150 years or so. And, uh, you know, I, I think that collaborative effort is is probably one of the most important things that, you know, we can bring to the table as a team. So let's start with one of those changes. Why is it a green box at this stage? So the reason it's a green box is, is you know, we always talk about air tightness, we talk about air leakage and, and all this stuff. And you know, my goal is always to get some kind of understanding in, in what it is that we're doing. Because I, I meet with a lot of builders that say, oh, I build really airtight, and you wouldn't believe how great my houses are. Oh, well, what's your blower door number? Oh, we don't even do a blower door number because we just know that we build this so tight. Well, if you don't validate and understand what you're doing, then you really can't boast about what you're doing because you don't know what you're doing. So the fact that this is a green box, we chose to sheathe over all of the windows. It does a couple things. One, it allows us to test zip wall as the air barrier, solely as the air barrier on the wall. There's no components mixed in. So we get an understanding of the zip wall, what it's worth. But then later when you come in and we cut holes in the wall, we put doors and windows in, and then we do another blower door test. Well, the delta of those blower door tests, we begin to understand what value is placed on when we cut holes in the windows and how can we improve those numbers and do a better job of air sealing around windows and improve those numbers and find out what they are. So, you know, having that green box and having that really good baseline of understanding allows us to understand all the various components now that get inserted in that wall. And so then, us as a team over a, a, a matter of years, the green box also gets us, we can track every window install and how we did on each win window install and we're able to try something different next time, omit something next time, fiddle with the assembly and see if we can't make it cost less or easier to do or easier to duplicate, things like that. And so the green box comes into play like every time we end up working together because we, it's one more way for us to verify. Certainly, and and you know we did this house, we've done the other ones with you, and we have numbers on that. So we get to understand, is your framer getting a little better? Are our details getting a little better? Did we able to manage our you know initial thoughts and make some 
you know, innovative decisions that might take us down a slightly different path so that we're making something easier for the framer. Or it could just be something that the framer said on this house that said, hey, if you allow me to not put that sealant there and put it here and I'll run the, you know, continuous bead here, I think we end up in the same place. Well, by validating it, we understand, okay, we made it easier for the framer and we ended up in the same place. So let's continue on now doing that detail and abandon our original thought. So again, it all leads down to, you know, our, our goal is to gain control. And the only way you can gain control is to know what you're doing. And the only way to really know what you're doing is to set up the plan, you know, through a collaborative effort and then validate that plan. And then we gain control and the rest yep. of it's easy. And so yesterday we validated the plan here by doing our first blower door test. And we had a really good blower door test. Do you mind telling us what that is and explaining why that's important? So the blower door test is simply a measure of air tightness across the building envelope, right? So we put a big fan in the wall and we pressurize the house or depressurize the house depending on how we wanna do the test. And then we take those measurements and we identify a number that's a certain amount of air leakage that's an industry standard. And, um, and then we can understand we're doing either a good job, a great job or an exceptional job. And so yesterday we air tested at 0.3 ACH50. The national code for our climate zone, climate zone four, is three air exchanges per hour. Right, an order of magnitude above. Yeah, so uh, literally we're one, one tenth of what's allowable by code. And that gives us ability to control the air inside the house, which then controls all the contaminants. Uh, it allows us to retain all the, the air that we've invested energy in, things like that. But we went one step further here. After we had that blower door number, we, we introduced another product. Do you want to talk to us about that? Yeah, so a, a few months ago, we set up in a conversation with another manufacturer, Aero Barrier, to come out and spray this house with their aerosol, which is an air sealing aerosol that fills all the nooks and crannies. And the, the beauty of that is that, you know, like anything, we're out to validate and understand what we're doing. And it's okay for AeroBarrier to come and say, oh yeah, we've done all kinds of laboratory testing that says, you know, the longevity of the system, it's good for 20 years, 50 years, whatever the number is. I really don't care what they say because it's, it's done in the factory. What I care about is, is when we do something out here, we test it and validate it, then that's kind of a true number because that's what we can achieve, right? What you can achieve in the lab it matters, but it doesn't really matter because if we can't replicate yep. it out in the field, then that's a number in the lab and we have what we can do out in the field. So by, by having them come out and taking that 0.3 number, you know, the, the beauty of this is, and I commend you as a builder, you know, one of your standard tools is your own blower door. There's not a lot of builders in the country that have a blower door as part of their tool set, right? And so for you to have the blower door and then we have access to this house for the next 20 years, well, we can come back every six months and do a blower door test and then we can validate the longevity of AeroBear and your air sealing, yep. right? We, we'll, we'll know in five years or 10 years, is that number still holding or is it degrading? What, where are we and what's happening? And we understand the story. And we're able to make adjustments in our process and we're able to continually get better and, and grow towards a higher point of building. Exactly. And I, I think one of the other things that, that like you and I are working towards is this. We're trying to share this with everybody else. We're trying to make sure that everybody knows, hey, you can get to one-tenth of what the allowable air leakage is, or you can get to a higher standard of building with products from the lumberyard instead of projects from all over the globe just to make a house airtight or things like that. Exactly, and, and so you, you, you stabbed me right in the side and you, you, you poked me with that cattle prod because I'm about to launch here. So one of the things when you look at these videos and, and all the subsequent videos here, the most important takeaway that I can't stress enough is there's no silver bullets in this house, right? There's zip sheathing we got from the lumber yard. There's sealant we got from the lumber yard. We have zip tape, we have drywall as our air barrier lid, and we have concrete down in the basement and as our slab. There's no materials here. Our, we waited on getting, none of the construction sequence was out of sequence. This is purely an example of a collaborative effort and then you and your guys executing 
those collaborative decisions just with a real conscious, you know, execution and putting it together. And, and that's the thing that baffles me most is that we watch all these videos and we talk, you know, the whole construction industry gets to watch and say, oh yeah, look at these guys are doing crazy things. Well, we, you can call it crazy, you can call it whatever you want. But all we did here was build a house, Yep. right? We built just like they're doing down the street. It's just down the street, they don't give a damn and they don't scrutinize everything that they're doing. And here, we just stepped out of the line of fire for a second and said, let's just think about what we're doing here and get a plan of attack. And then we'll attack it once we have that plan. And oh, by the way, if it didn't work here, then we're gonna adjust that plan on the next one. And that's all we can ask of ourselves, right? We do our best and then we learn from our best and move on from there. You know, that that's just a pet peeve of mine because I'm so, Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm getting really frustrated with the industry to thinking that, oh, I can't do that, or wow, we don't, you, you, we don't do that in Missouri. Clients won't pay for that Cl in our market. Clients won't pay yeah. for it. All we're doing is we're executing a plan to the next level of consciousness. We're, we're just executing a little bit more care. And you know, if you're a builder that doesn't really care about what you're doing, then you're never really gonna get them to change. And they're gonna get kind of weeded out in the industry just by virtue of, they're gonna have some problems and they're not gonna last. And I think that this, this idea of us building a team that's collaborative is really starting to pay off too because while we've had plenty of successes that were like this level of air sealing, this level of quality before, this is the first one that we've done together that was not framed by my in-house carpenters. Yeah. This was framed by a subcontractor. And all it took for the subcontractor to get to a point that is some of the best in the country is us just having a few conversations, looking at a few pictures and talking about what the goal is up front and then buying into what we wanna do. So I think that our, our overarching conversation is we're gonna plan better, we're gonna think about our processes, we're gonna challenge our, ourselves and the people that we work with to just do a better job and great things can happen very easily. Yeah, I, I, again, I'm getting tired of people saying, oh, you can't use drywall as an air barrier, you can't use this or zip wall doesn't make a good air barrier. 0.30 before we used aero barrier. All right, that's that's half of passive house air leakage before we did anything but frame the house. So yes, and, and you, you brought up an excellent point. This isn't done by you and your guys spending 12 hours scrutinizing a, a sealant joint. This is a framer doing the air sealing details at a production level that he just inserted a little bit more consciousness into his daily routine. And he was willing to accept that understanding that our goal was to achieve something different. And it's, it's possible. We're standing in front of it, right? This, this is where yep. we should be. Okay, so follow Steve and myself on Instagram. Stay tuned for more from the Hybrid House and Aero Building on the Build Show Network. Thanks, Steve. Anytime, buddy. Guys, if you want to see more on this house, go to thebuildshow.com. We'll put a little bit of a playlist below. I also have another video that I shot here a couple years ago, but this is one of the first videos that Jake posted. If you don't realize, in 2020, we launched thebuildshow.com, and this is our way to really increase the reach and the uh, geographics and the style of building. We've got 14 total contributors that are publishing about 16 videos a week over on thebuildshow.com. So do yourself a favor, sign up in the description below for our newsletter. We send a newsletter out every Tuesday and every Friday from the Build Show saying, here's what's new from Jake and Steve and all of our other contributors. And absolutely go follow both Jake and Steve on Instagram and below will be a link to them on thebuildshow.com because these, these guys both have been on the site now for about five years. They literally have several hundred videos giving you free information on how to build a really good house or Steve, how to actually design a fabulous house. So big thanks to these guys for all their hard work. With that being said, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.